Twitch.tv, the most popular live streaming platform on the planet. The service has gone through many changes over the years from the games only start to real life streams, just chatting, events, live shows, and of course everybody's favorites, ASMR, hot tubs, and gambling. It's safe to say that if you are in the market for some entertainment, you can find just about anything on Twitch. Now I've used Twitch since the very start, both as a viewer and a streamer. I love Twitch from both perspectives for what it allows me to do, to connect with other people who have a shared interest, whether that is sharing my interests and being social as a broadcaster, or just having another person there on my screen who I can relate to or be entertained by. It's easy to see why people form bonds when they watch creators for hundreds or thousands of hours spanning across multiple years. Most of us appreciate having that person there that we've known for a long time that grows with us. Twitch is fantastic for what it does and what it provides. Unfortunately, this ability to connect with people has also turned Twitch into the stalker's paradise and it has only gotten worse over time and will probably get worse from here. And that isn't to say this is a new concept, it's not specific to Twitch as a platform and I don't think they are to blame as a company, at least not always. This has happened of course to YouTube creators. I lived in six different locations and I've had fans coming up to each and every single one of them. It's fucking weird. And in a broader context to celebrities in all industries. Twitch is, however, in my opinion, the worst of them all just due to how live streaming works. The same mechanisms that make some people stick around for hours every single day to form bonds and parasocial relationships that typically benefit the streamer is also the mechanisms that create this problem. You are on Twitch providing a product, that product is you, and you cannot control who is watching you. It could be a 45 year old man from Texas who has a wife, two kids, a stable job. He's normal, he just likes to watch your Grand Theft Auto 5 roleplay sessions and donate you a couple dollars each month for the enjoyment he receives. It could be a 16 year old who likes watching your six skills in Fortnite or Valorant and aspires to be as skilled as you, picking up tips along the way, looking up to you for your abilities. Or on the flip side, it could be someone whom by malevolence or mental health troubles cannot separate their thoughts from reality. Perhaps they watch to harass you, to find your address and scare you, or send things to your home like pizzas or SWAT teams, which has resulted in deaths in the past. Or maybe they watch you because they think you are or will be romantically interested in them. Whatever the reason is, you can be sure that the real world apparatus for protecting yourself is dated to say the least. I'd call it not fit for purpose. Best case scenario is it's not helpful. Worst case scenario, it's harmful to your situation. This is like most things common in our daily lives due to social media or the internet. The laws, the regulations, the policies or whatever other word or system you can think of is simply out of date. I can tell you this firsthand as I have been the target of harassment and threats in my time being a content creator though luckily not as bad as some of the examples we're about to talk about. Oftentimes you'll call the police and they simply don't do anything or they tell you they can't do anything and you should be fine, call them if something more serious happens. So the latest story to come out of the Twitch sphere on this one really displays how bad things can get. Popular streamer Caitlyn, or better known as Amaranth, has shared stories with creepy strangers and stalkers numerous times in the past. It's a common occurrence unfortunately. Her latest stalker though, this one's terrifying. On June 7th, 2022, Amaranth posted on Twitter stating the following, quote, I have a stalker who has been in my area since May 8th. He literally watches my stream all day and badly mimics everything I do. Does ASMR badly, takes a shower on his Twitch stream when I'm in the hot tub. In the past, I've reported him for restreaming me, but because he had traveled all the way from Estonia to my city, living in a nearby hotel, I want his stream to remain up so I can keep a close tab on him. She goes on to describe that she has home security and has recently hired an armed guard to live in the guest quarters of her home. Now let me just reiterate on that tweet for you so you know we're all on the same page of how insane this is. A man who watches her live stream, which is her job, has found her home city and then moved there from Estonia, a country in Europe. He's moved to the United States where he lives in a hotel nearby. She goes on to detail that he has sold all of his worldly possessions to do this. His home, his car, his furniture, his cat, everything. He's given up on his life and he's getting himself into crippling debt, ruining his future to be near her, a stranger on the internet whom he watches. Now if the concept of someone showing up in your city isn't bad enough, the fact he leaves himself very little ability to return back to that previous life as he's gotten rid of it all is extremely worrying. It essentially means he has nothing to lose now. According to Amaranth, the police have been well aware of the situation the whole time. They know where he is, they have regular patrols, 
but they cannot do anything despite the fact he's made his intensifying her very clear. He live streams on Twitch all day with his Twitch titles literally saying, find Caitlyn, aka Amaranth, and make her mine. Add on to this, the hotel the stalker was staying in wasn't picked randomly. It was picked because it has direct line of sight to Amaranth's PO box, which of course she owns so that her fans can send her things without having her actual address. He spent over a month camping out at Starbucks next to the PO box just in case she showed up. He of course also sent her explicit messages, naked videos of him dancing, and repeatedly called her his fiance. He would type in chat in response, liar, li liar, mmm, my fiance. Now I think it's observable when somebody's like this, when they're this unwell. You either stop them or they escalate. And of course he did, he followed the pattern. After 44 days of this behavior, despite repeatedly saying on his live stream he knew what he was doing was wrong, but he just had to do it, he showed up at her house where she lives, still live streaming himself the whole time. For 30 minutes, he walked around the outside of her property and still the police did nothing despite being made aware of the situation. He then tried to break in, 911 was called and according to Amaranth, dispatch was rude. They cut her off, put her on hold and it took 33 minutes for the police to arrive. The police weren't really uh, taking it too seriously until he was physically like in my lot, right? Up and down the street, they were just like, uh, whatever. When they did, they detained him and contacted the embassy. Amaranth clarifies he's no longer in the city and that's all she can say for now. Hopefully this means he's not going to be returning. Now this is not a happy ending. Despite him being gone, it shows that the police will do nothing despite there being clear evidence of stalking and harassment. What would be the requirement to do something before it got to the stage of him trying to break into a house? At what point is this man breaking the law? At what point is he deemed a threat? Only apparently when he's literally on her property. This is consistent across almost every one of these cases that are brought to light publicly and it displays a massive issue. Had it not been for the fact that this man live streamed his daily activities and made it known to our month what he was planning to do minute by minute due to that live stream, had she not the means to hire armed security, this man could quite easily have shown up to her house and things could have ended a totally different way. For example, in the case of Meg Turney, this man had been stalking her for a while and he broke into her and her partner's home in 2018 with a handgun with the intent of committing murder of her partner and likely other crimes that I cannot say, but you can infer from the situation. The couple had to hide in the closet after they heard the window break and a gunshot and the man had time to search the home briefly before leaving where the police had arrived and fatally shot him. Meg Turney had to stop posting videos, which was her main source of income for half a year after, due to fear for her safety and of course the mental toll that something like this would take. Another example, another Twitch streamer, Sweet Anita. She had to deal with a guy threatening and stalking her for years, the police doing almost nothing in response. The guy literally assaulted her, threatened her constantly, showed up at her house, was caught walking to her house with a knife in his possession, broke into her mother's home, threatened her mother and to kill her mother's animals. I mean, she would walk downstairs and he would be on his knees at the front door, looking at her through her letterbox. He would sleep in her back garden and she says he would literally stand at her door knocking for hours at a time. He calmly walked over, making eye contact with me through the window of my house and just sat on the bench, whipped out a drink, and just went and carried on watching. Whenever she left the house, he would follow her. She even got a restraining order and still he continued, breaching the restraining order constantly and receiving zero repercussions. The entire time this was happening, she constantly called the police. The police picked him up on his way to her home with a knife after he had sent her messages saying, I'm on my way to kill you now and they released him from custody three minutes walk away from her house after doing absolutely nothing. That was one stalker. She's now come public again with another stalker who's been messaging her daily for months claiming he will be going to TwitchCon, which is an in-person event that many streamers attend, to meet her, despite her not wanting to meet him of course. He says he will be going in a disguise and details how he loves her and doesn't want to hurt her or her security. Now every single time something like this comes out online, there is a massive number of female streamers or content creators that share their own stories. Stories that you will likely never know about because it happens to even smaller creators that don't get the headlines. You never see their social media posts about it, but it's happening. It doesn't matter how big they are, how small they are in terms of viewership, the harassment, the stalking, the death threats, the threats of violence, they are consistent across the board. It doesn't matter what their style of content is, what they stream or how they stream it, it will just happen. 
The fact this happens is not the only consistent thing, of course. The inaction of authorities, the lack of tools to deal with the situation, that is as consistent as the problem itself. Another quick example, a creator called Nally Please, a World of Warcraft streamer. An ex-cop stalked her for months, threatening to murder her, photoshopping her face onto the naked images of other women, spreading them around pretending it was her, spreading her personal information, pretending to be her, trying to find her in real life, the list goes on. She tried to get a restraining order against this man. You know what information she needed to provide to proceed with a restraining order? Her home address that the defendant would gain access to should she wish to proceed. So to clarify, to get a restraining order, something that is easy to break and the consequences as previously shown could amount to zero, she would need to give her stalker who is threatening to kill her the address she lives at. Luckily this man has since been arrested by the FBI and if convicted will face up to five years in federal prison, one of the rare cases where something happens before it's too late. Unfortunately though, this went on for months and Nally please stopped streaming as far as I'm aware, which basically means that the career that she was pursuing and of course the income that she was getting from it in the meantime is just gone. And of course the mental toll that this takes on you is something that cannot be put into numbers or into words. There are hundreds of examples of this online. People have been murdered like this. Deranged people have, have found where somebody lives, gone to their house and killed them. We live in a world where you can make a living online being a content creator, a streamer, an entertainer, a public personality and yet we have almost no protections at all. It is so incredibly easy to find where somebody lives and there's almost nothing you can do about it. Even when somebody is literally threatening you and you can tell them exactly where they are, exactly what they've done, and it's there for you in plain black and white, the police will almost never do anything about it. It really confuses me how social media is such a huge part of most people's lives, and yet the laws and restrictions surrounding your personal identifiable information have not changed in a way that makes you harder to find for the public. This needs to change. It needs to be way harder to find people if you've not publicly put your address out there. I don't know why it's okay for people to be able to find where you live simply by finding out your real name and googling you. Now this video mostly focuses on the stalkers of female streamers because they have it the worst right now. But you're not even safe if you're a man. Swatting has been a thing for years which is where a deranged viewer will call your local police and claim you're holding somebody hostage with a weapon or something else that would prompt an immediate armed response. This has resulted in pets being killed, houses being damaged and people losing their lives. Not to mention the constant waste of resources and the mental toll it takes on the creator who's just trying to make a living or enjoy their hobby. People will order pizzas to your house, order escorts to your house, streamers have had people shoot at their home with firearms. It just never ends, the list keeps getting longer and a job where you sit in your home making videos or, or playing a video game or whatever else you do is becoming a very dangerous endeavor. For me recently I had somebody repeatedly call my personal number throughout the night and recite my details to me, my entire home address, my full name, my email address, and when I asked them what they wanted they told me they just wanted to let me know that they knew about me. Prior to this I had my bank account compromised and my details stolen, people trying to take out credit cards in my name, I've had threatening emails and discord messages, I had to spend over a thousand dollars on a security system and now I'm constantly on edge when I hear noises in the house at night. It's incredibly scary, it's stressful, I can't even imagine how bad it is for people who get much worse. This is a massive problem, it needs way more attention and something needs to be done about this. Thank you for watching, see you next time.